Equivalence of this family, which turns out to be an equivalence relation. Then I will define the category of I Poisson manifolds, which are um, a, somehow a generalization of the category of Poisson manifolds and also a generalization of the constraint systems in physics at the same time. And then in the third section, we will see the marriage of the first two. In fact, uh, I will find a functor from the category of SRFs, similar Riemannian affiliations, to the category of uh, I plus or manifolds. Okay, so let's start with similar affiliations. There are two approaches to define them. The first one, which is more geometry, only requires a decomposition of the manifold uh, into uh, submanifolds called leaves, which can have different dimensions, and that's why we call them similar. Um, but it can be good in some, uh, some reasons, but uh, has some disadvantages. For example, one cannot define the holonomy group point for uh, singular foliations defined like this. The second approach, which is the uh, definition we prefer to work with, is more algebraic and uh, it's defined like a pair MF, where M is a smooth manifold, F is a submodular vector fields on F <coughs> that is um, closed under the loop bracket. <coughs> so, no kind of finitely generated. And in that around each point, you have to exist neighborhood such that F restricted to this neighborhood can be generated by finitely many vector fields. And the theorem of Hellman shows that uh, such a singular foliation decomposes uh, the manifold into uh, leaves. Okay, in order to define monitor equivalence, we would like to be able to uh, take pullback of singular foliations using smooth submersions. Uh, so assume that you have a smooth submersion pi from a from manifold M to the base manifold M, and uh, we have a singular foliation F on the base. In order to define the pullback, first we should uh, introduce uh, a submodular sub vector fits on M. That uh, we will define it like this to be generated by projectable vector fields on N projecting to F, meaning that it means uh, it, it consists of vector fields on N such that there exists a vector field uh, in the foliation, uh, satisfying the property that the vector field projects point wise to the second one. And it's not difficult to see that it's closed under the Lee bracket, but uh, the next proposition shows that this is uh, locally finitely generated as well. And we uh, have a similar foliation on that. Okay, now uh, let's. Uh, look at singular foliations on Riemannian manifolds and define singular Riemannian foliations, SRFs. Again, there are two approaches. The first one is geometric, I call them geometric SRFs, uh, which are the classical notion of uh, S singular Riemannian foliations. Uh, we have a singular foliation, we have the Riemannian structure, so uh, we should introduce the compatibility condition between these two. And in this case, the compatibility condition is that for every geodesic, which, is, which starts perpendicular to a leaf, it should remain perpendicular to all the leaves it means. Uh, intuitionally, it means that your leaves are locally equidistant, locally parallel, <laughs> but not globally. Globally does not imply this condition. 
And, this, uh, and the second remark is that uh, this condition uh, doesn't really care about the module itself. It only cares about the lift decomposition. For this reason, uh, we prefer to work with another definition, which cares about the module. And that's why we call the module S on F. Uh, the Riemannian manifold and the singular foliation are as before, but uh, the compatibility condition is as follows. We require the lead derivative of the metric, the Riemannian metric, in the direction of the foliation uh, should lie inside the symmetric tensor product of the threshold one forms and the image of the foliation under the musical isomorphism. And uh, if you don't remember what was musical isomorphism, it's the bundle isomorphism between tangent and cotangent bundles uh, given by the metric. Yeah. Okay, and uh, the relation between these two definitions is that every module SRF is a geometric SRF. And if time permits, I want to prove this fact uh, at the end of the talk. But the converse is not true. Okay, now due to the presence of the metric, we would like to um, take pullbacks of module SRF or geometric SRFs on the base of its uh, Riemannian submersion to the top. And uh, if you don't know Riemannian submersion, that's the definition. We require that at each point, um, the orthogonal complement to the kernel should uh, be isometric to the tangent, tangent space of the base. So um, you can define the pullback singular foliation as before. It's not difficult to see that in the case of geometric SRF, uh, it will remain uh, the geometric SRF. This is a bit more tricky in the case of modular SRF, but it still holds true. Uh, where we use uh, techniques from the next uh, section to prove this fact. Okay, now um, you know, we can define Marita equivalence for SRFs. Uh, as I mentioned, it, should, it would be an equivalence relation and SRF deciding when two singular uh, Riemannian foliations have uh, the same transverse geometry. And I should mention that it's inspired by the notion of hausdorff Marita equivalence for singular foliation defined by and Bohm. And that is the definition. So I assume that we have two singular Riemannian foliations, F1, F1, G1, F1, G1, F1, and F2, G2, F2. Modulus RF or geometry of this RF. This definition works for both. We call them Marita equivalent if there exists a Riemannian manifold and H and uh, two surjective and Erishman complete Riemannian submersions with connected fibers, pi one and pi two, satisfying this property that the pullback foliations coincide on N. And by Erishman complete, I mean that um, uh, for every smooth curve on the base, there exist global horizontal lifts starting from arbitrary base, uh, starting points on the fiber. And uh, we can show that this is an equivalence relation. It's a bit more tricky uh, than the proof for house of Marita equivalence uh, due to the presence of the metric. But the first observation. Uh, is that when we have two Marita equivalent SRFs, their leaf spaces are homeomorphic. It's not difficult to see because if we take a leaf, its pre image is a single leaf of, uh, of the pullback foliation. And this is uh, the pre image of a single leaf of the other foliation as well. So we will have the correspondence. You can see that uh, both are continuous and if this will give the homeomorphism, but uh, we have even more. We can say that if, if these two are uh, monitor equivalent, these two SRFs are monitor equivalent, then the leaf spaces are isometric pseudometric spaces, or 
saying that the isomeomorphism preserves the distance between the leaves. And in the case the, these leaf spaces are smooth, they would be isometric as uh, Riemannian manifolds. Now let's jump to high cross manifolds before introducing them to the theoretical coisotropic reduction, uh, where we have a symplectic manifold, we have a coisotropic submanifold, meaning that it's vanishing ideal IC is a Poisson subalgebra. Under these conditions, this Hamiltonian flows of IC, uh, Hamiltonian vector fields of IC induce a singular foliation on C. And in the case, this foliation and uh, its leaf spaces are really regular, we would obtain a synthetic manifold, which we call it C reduced or reduction of C. But this is not always the case. Singular so it's the time I was on that. I was on just a three pal P bracket and I, where P bracket is a Poisson manifold, and I is the locally finitely generated ideal, which is a Poisson algebra as well. Uh, you can look at it as a family of constraints, this I as a family of constraints on uh, the Poisson manifold. The first uh, object that we can associate to an I Poisson manifold is the Poisson normalizer of its ideal I, which is defined as usual. And the main property of this normalizer that you want to use is the following proposition, saying that um, if we take a function f in the normalizer of the ideal I, then it preserves the ideal I locally if f is compactly supported or its Hamiltonian vector field is complete, then uh, the result would be global. And this proposition shows the importance of I being locally finitely generated. There are, there, there are counter examples for, uh, for the case I is not locally finitely generated. Okay, an easy observation is that um, as, uh, as a corollary of the Jacobi identity for the bracket, we can see that uh, both an I and the quotient an I over I are Poisson algebras. And we call this an I over I the Poisson reduction of the I Poisson why do we call it Poisson reduction? Because in the case of the quasi reduction, this NIC over IC would be the Poisson algebra of the smooth functions on C reduce. Then to have the category, we have to introduce the morphisms. Uh, we call the morphisms I Poisson maps. These are smooth maps from uh, an I Poisson manifold P1 I1 to another one P2 I2, satisfying the following properties. First of all, we require that uh, the pullback of N I2, the second one lies inside N I1. Second condition is the same thing for I2. And the third condition is. Uh, as follows, for every two functions f and g in the normalizer of I2, the ideal of the sect of the target I Poisson manifold, we require this difference, which is which should be zero in the case of uh, in the case of Poisson maps, uh, to lie inside I1. So this should be and. Uh, this is, a, uh, I think this can be a good definition for two reasons. First of all, if we set I1 and I2 both to be zero, we obtain Poisson maps. And second is the following proposition that uh, such an I Poisson map induces a morphism of from the Poisson reduction of the second one to the Poisson reduction of the first one. And uh, this one can check that these conditions, if we fix this condition I, just we can 
natural condition. Uh, then the, the next two conditions are the minimal conditions to have this proposition, this property. Okay, so how much time do we have? Uh, like three minutes or so. Three minutes? Five minutes. <laughs> So, um, okay, let's see the manager of the first two. Uh, first of all, the categories is introducing categories, category of singular Riemannian coordinations. Uh, its objects are SRFs, its morphisms are Riemannian submersions, preserving the foliations. And uh, we also introduce this category of I plus manifolds. So let's define a factor. First of all, we should uh, we should be able to uh, map the objects. Um, before that, let's look at the vector field on the manifold M. This can be viewed as a function on the cotangent bundle by applying the uh, covector part to the evaluation of V at the base. And uh, this stands out to be this correspondence turns out to be a morphism of Lie algebras, which means that if we start with a singular foliation with, with the module, then the ideal IF generated by the elements of F viewed as functions on TSRM, uh, it would be locally finitely generated. And after this observation, it would be a Poisson subalgebra as well. So we can map. A singular Riemannian foliation to TSRM, its standard bracket, and by F, which is an I plus manifold. So we are able to send the objects. Uh, here we didn't use the metric, but for the morphisms to map the morphisms, we need the metric. Okay, so uh, let's take a, a morphism of uh, SRS. Obtain the map uh, between the corresponding I plus one manifolds. Note that its differential d pi is a bounded map from Tn to Tm. We can also use the musical isomorphism Gn flat and Gm flat to go to the tangent bundle. And then we would have a map phi pi making this diagram. And we can show that we can send pi to phi pi. And this uh, map phi between the categories would be a factor. This phi pi would be an i plus map between the corresponding uh, i plus matrix. Something to mention is that this map phi pi is a Poisson map if and only if the horizontal distribution of the Riemannian submersion is integral. So this is the abstraction for phi pi to be an i plus map. Another result, uh, after using this uh, machinery, we can show that uh, Poisson reductions are invariants of Morita equivalent for singular Riemannian foliations, and uh, which later it, ter it turned out they turned out to be also invariants of uh, Hausdorff Morita equivalents for singular foliations because they can be defined uh, without the metric. Um, I don't know if I stop here or uh, you can still. Okay, two I only mean, have two pages. <laughs> sure, quite sure. So, um, if we have a Riemannian manifold, it's the Riemannian metric induces, uh, actually defines the Hamiltonian function Hg on the cotangent bundle. In local coordinates, it's given by one half of Gij, the uh, inverse of the metric Pipj. These are the final coordinates. This is a standard Hamiltonian function of the metric. And uh, now, in this language, we can uh, formulate uh, model SRFs in a nicer way. We can say that NGF is a model SRF if and only if this Hamiltonian function HG it lies inside the normalizer of IF. And now uh, I can translate to the following proposition that every model SRF 
is a geometric SRF. Okay, so let's take a module SRF. And we have to, in order to show that it's also a geometric SRF, we have to take an arbitrary geodesic gamma, which is orthogonal to the, which is orthogonal to the foliation at uh, its starting point, and we need to show that it remains orthogonal. So, apply this functor phi, we go to the cotangent bundle, and look at the vanishing idea, uh, the common zero set of IF. C, which is this uh, red singular subset here. But uh, in the way we, we define IF, it's not difficult to see, to see that it's equal to the annihilator of F because we apply the core vector part to the vector it's evaluated at the base point. So if they are all zero, the score vectors should be uh, in the annihilators of IF. So C is this one. This means that uh, no, uh, the next thing is that uh, for our geodesics, we can look at the look at the topological lifts in the tangent bundle, and use the musical isomorphism to send them to curves in uh, the cotangent bundle. And uh, something to mention is that by the definition of G flat, uh, this this means that. This uh, perpendicular condition on at the starting point means that um, this curve G flat gamma gamma dot intersects C. The perpendicular is equivalent to intersecting C. And in order to show that uh, it remains perpendicular, we have to show that it remains in C if it intersects C. But it's now, easy to show because of these two facts. First of all, the well known fact about the Hamiltonian HG, because it's, um, its flow, the Hamiltonian flow of HG, is the image of the geodesic flow under the musical isomorphism. These curves are exactly trajectories of HG. And the uh, SRF condition was that. HG lies inside the normalizer of IF. So after proposition four about the normalizer, it preserves IF. So if it, if it intersects the common zero set, it should remain in that common zero set. Maybe this completes the proof. Thank you for your attention. Yes. So, so you have this theorem that uh, marital equivalent equivalence between two foliations implies uh, isomorphisms of uh, um, between between the algebras, right? No, the next one. The, between the marital equivalence implies uh, isomorphisms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, that's yeah. right. So, uh, in the opposite direction, is there any anything? Uh, and also, why, why do you call it marital equivalence? Uh, first of all, because it's inspired by House of Marital Equivalence for singular foliations. Mm -hmm. And for singular foliations, we have the fact that uh, if they are House of Marital Equivalent, then they would have um, Marital Equivalent holonomy group points. That's mm -hmm. why I call them uh, Marital Equivalent. And about um, your first question, I don't know, but I don't think so. I actually have a similar question one stage up. Like for your functor, can you say something? No, 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 one page one, like one level up. Uh, for your functor, can you say anything smart for the other direction? Um, like I give you an iposon manifold. Can you say if it comes from a singular foliation or what? So far, it should be. Uh, it should be defined on the on a cotangent bundle. <laughs> yes, And um, do I need to say something about the i? Um, in fact, uh, what we can say is that um, i should be something special. When you start with a singular foliation, you obtain 
uh, fiber linear functions. So the IDL should be at least generated by fiber linear functions. And in that case, I think you can use the generators and look at the corresponding vector fields. But about uh, the Riemannian condition, you need to have the Hamiltonian coming from metric. Questions? If not, let's thank the speaker again.